Five, and hopefully everybody has their proper positions as they think it could. <laughs> Assume the position. That's what I get for spitting up scenes like last, not last minute, it was during this last night, but assuming people were in the proper zones. Hi, everybody! <laughs> we are back. Uh, oh, look at that. With the continuation of the hidden shrine of the Moa Chan. Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi. <laughs> Pooped everywhere. Sure, why not? <laughs> Alright, so it's been a couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> just a quick recap. You were uh, exploring the lost city of Tomokan for several different reasons. When you had a section collapse underneath you, dropping you into uh, what appeared to be an old temple. You wandered around a bit. You had a very difficult time with a door. Yep. Uh, an hour and 15 minutes worth of difficult time with a door. Uh, met a gigantic crayfish and an even larger hermit crab. Uh, you killed the crayfish, almost killed the hermit crab, uh, but then, you know, stopped. And he talked with you and he said, do not go to the north. Um, he said people went in and out of the east, so you went to the west. Uh, <laughs> which led you to a muddy, a strange muddy room with acidy walls. Uh, you came, went through that and found a corridor with a giant statue that had gem eyes and a big sword on its back. You knocked it over, revealing a hidden passage that brought you to essentially where you are now. And, um... You stand in a corridor partly full of water, seeping, oozing water that goes down to another room that you had explored that was full of water. Uh, and you stand before a couple of double doors. Four doors. Mm -hmm. um, there is a slight crack in the door oh, and you can see goes. some... Um, yep, it looks like, yep, we're going to be losing... Uh, Sir Percival off and on. Oh. And we're going to jump all around the screen. Apologies in advance. Um, there is a bit of light shining through the door. And you can't tell, but there's an odd sound coming from the door. Kind of sounds like water dripping. It kind of maybe is almost musical in nature. You don't know. Interesting. Well, or water dripping? What? It's kind of it's kind of odd. It's it's very very echoey, and from where you're standing, um, you can't quite tell. It's it almost has like a, a musical quality to it, but it's very echoey and watery. Oh. Uh. Shall we check if the door is locked? Yes, please do that. Uh, I guess. All right. A perception check. My perception is awesome. Yeah, that's yep, it is. pretty good. <clears throat> so the door does not appear to be locked. In fact, it almost seems like it's it's a double door and it's not completely closed tightly which is why you can see some of the uh, light coming through. And actually with a roll of 18, as you listen, it definitely sounds like there's um, a melody, almost like a, a, it sounds almost like a voice, but you can't quite tell. It doesn't sound exactly like a voice either. Hmm. Can well, I that's make out if it's like, Female, male. Um, it's kind of high pitched. Um, can't really make out if it's female or male, but it's definitely like in an alto type range. Um, and as you listen a little more carefully too, you definitely hear the sound of water as well. Okay. 
Okay. When you said like the door has like a crack, like an opening, I not enough to really see through. Okay. Just it's just they're not close. They're not closed together tightly. They're not latched to each other. So they're easily, they can be pushed open. It seems like it. Well, Mr. Fancy Pants, shall we open the door? Yes, let's open the door. <laughs> How are you opening it? Does it look like it would open towards us or away from us? Uh, it would open inward into the room. I guess I'll push it open. Okay. And let me... I have been working on some of this. Let's see if this works. Ta-da! So as you look into the room, the doors open, swing open, and you barely see a uh, flicker of what seemed to be uh, long, pale ha hair and white skin as something dump jumps into the pool. Supposed to be seeing something? Yeah. Yes. Yep. It's not showing? Okay, cool. No. Cool. cool. <laughs> there you go. Hey. So you see a pool of water. Um, there's, a, there's a floating um, sphere giving off a soft bluish green light. Um, it looks like there's a rocky beach in front of you. Uh, it's very sandy, very rocky. Uh, fills about half the room. The other half is filled with a, uh, a pond, almost a pool. Uh, it's glowing water in a, in a pool that fills half the room. And you can see water coming in from off to the south. Um, and on the far side of the pool... You can see a set of double doors uh, carved with a, the same giant sunburst symbol you've been seeing around the temple. Hmm. Um, and over on the south, near the south uh, southern uh, entrance to the room, you see a, f a fairly decent sized pile of debris with what might be a body in it, you can't really tell from this this distance. So I saw... Did we see the... Uh, person? Yep. It was... Right about here-ish. Uh, but the, whatever it was, dove Where into the water very quickly. Uh, right there? Nope. Um... Right there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Wait a well... sec. Hmm? Nothing. Okay. This looks like the uh, area that we weren't supposed to go into that no one has come out from. I say this to Scab. So... Do we turn around? Should we turn around? Uh, I don't recall. Were there other ways to go? I think there was, right? Yeah, there was a way to the east. Back um, all the way back there. Also, who, there's Who's another, up in the front here? It's like uh, myself, Percival, okay, and, and behind Percival is uh, Cork. All right. Um... Is it probably Percival would have been me in yep. front of Percival since I opened okay. the door. Yeah. Yep. But okay. I just can't move her character. Uh, it doesn't look like she's. Uh, I can move her around if need be. Yeah, she's heavy. Um, if she's going to drop, I'll switch it over to Phil. You can uh, Jaeger driver. Yeah. Um. Uh, percep perception check again from uh, Scab and Korak, please. All right, as you're sitting talking, Scab, you're looking around the room and you actually see some rustling and movement in the pile of debris. And it's hard, it, you're really not sure if your ears are playing tricks on you, but it almost sounds like there was like a, a bit of a groan um, 
from it. You said scab, right? Yep, scab heard that. Okay. I'm sorry. Sorry, the groan was from Isle? Yes, okay. and it, it rustled a little bit. Are we in the room, or I'm just looking around from the door? Look around uh, from the door. Okay. You're in the door. Still. Okay. Uh, I'll be like, something moved there. I don't know if we want to check it out or go back. Hmm. If there's something alive that is possibly human, not enemy, then we should possibly check it out. Well, then be my guest. All right. I'm going to go into the room and skirt along and go along the side to where did uh, you hear it? Uh, it it came from that pile over there. From the body? Body Hopefully. pile thing? There's a pile of debris. What looks like there might be like a, a humanoid body in it. All right. I'll skirt um, along the side. Okay. As you get about that far out of the water, you see uh, up jumps out a... Uh, looks like a woman. Um, a young woman with long, uh, pale golden hair. She's got very pale skin, and she's wearing what looks like kind of a, a shawl or a wrap, um, which is white and, and actually reminds you of, like, breaking waves, the way it's draped across her and the color of it. Um, as she sees you come across the room and move towards uh, the pile, she, she says to you, No! He is mine. I'll move up and be like, Hey, gorgeous. How you doing? Why? Why are you here? He is mine. You may not have him. Is he okay? Why not? He, he, he will be fine. I am helping him. Insight check. <laughs> Go ahead and roll. <laughs> Could at least say it the RP way instead of being like insight. I don't believe her. Um, she actually seems kind of um, forthright. Um, you you think that she's probably not telling you the whole truth, but she is very honest seeming in what she is saying. How um, are you going to help her? Um, and as you are moving, by the way, I'll show you. There is a tunnel that leads up to a door. And you can see the water coming out of there. Yeah. Uh, um, I'll continue kind of moving towards her and be like, Hey, doll, we can probably help with whatever's wrong with this person if you need assistance. Uh, we got lots of, like, Healy-type people. They help people. And, and I am helping him. Oh, he is mine. Okay. He came to me. He came to me, and he is my friend. Oh, okay. Um, um. As um, Corrick and Scab, you're the closest. Um, give me a wisdom check. Great wisdom, eh? Uh, wisdom saving throw. We'll do a saving throw. Oh, saving throw. Oh, great. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Yeah. Corrick? I did. Yeah, his is above mine. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, Scab, this makes a lot of sense, and she's seems very, very nice. And I don't, you know, why would you, why would you interfere with what she's doing here? And uh, you just hear it, and you just sort of stop, and you just, and then you just start looking at her, and like, you are a goblin, you are not a human, uh, but you know what? You could almost see the appeal in a human type creature. Uh, Korik, you yeah. feel like a tugging on your mind. Um, you almost want to listen and just believe her, but you shake it off and you realize that something was starting to mess with you. Huh. 
I see what you're trying to do here. You're not going to work on me. Um, meanwhile, I am going to add you, um, Phil, to. Uh, yep. I'm messaging her. I don't know which. Um, but that way you can you can just drive her. Yep. Um, he would also probably have, or sorry, he would have also probably followed him with me. I like how she has as, seven health and whatever. Yep. Um, as would Z Zether. Yeah, he would be like, I am here to help. I am blah blah paladin stuff and things. I can't act her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Ray, give her a wisdom saving throw. Uh, him a wisdom saving throw, too. Welcome to my road, Joe. I use mine. Sorry. Hold on. Let me open her sheet. But I like mm -hmm. my wooden. I, can we use that? No, no, no. You may not. <laughs> Probably. That's like so Caleb. Yep. I mean, hers. Yeah. She, she... Um. You. Corey. Uh, excuse me. Um. Sir Percival. Also, sort of just, sort of just is gazing and really kind of getting into it, uh, into her. Go on. Um. Cor and Zether. Uh, let's see. Does Zether come up with? Who is also having connection problems? The internet has decided to mess with our heads tonight. Yep. It's interfering with everything. Can never have anything nice. Yep. Oh, God. Okay. We're all charmed. It's all good. Yeah, yep. Except for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I'm still gonna head over to. Um. One. All right. As you take another step, as you take a couple more steps forward, she goes. I told you he is mine. And as she does that, you she gestures, and you see a large pillar of water form a couple of arms, and. She waves it at you, and the ar one of the arms comes at you and hits you square and make a DC, a DC saving throw of 13 against the strength. Uh, strength saving throw? Mm hmm Good. Oh, you made it. Um, so you take... Uh, didn't mean to do that, but whatever. Uh, 21 points of damage halved, so uh, we'll, yeah, we'll say um, we'll say 10. It's always round 10 down, points of it? 10 points of damage. Um, and you feel it like pushing against you, but you're able to hold firm against it. Um, at the same time, you also see a shadow in the water. And suddenly you are hit and make a constitution saving throw, please. Jeez. No, you made that one. <laughs> All right. Um, so you'll take um, six six lightning damage there. Aye. Um, and you're slightly stunned a little. As this happens, the, um, the water shape fades and go, falls back into the water while you um, see the shadow come up and rear out of the water as this large eel appears. And is undulating and looking straight at you in the pool. As this is happening, um, everybody that was sort of gazing longingly is kind of kind of snaps out of it as you see uh, the eel appear and uh, your friend get attacked by a stream of water. Oh, 
Okay. Well, and then uh, we will roll initiative, please. <laughs> that was cocked. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and Zephyr, I'm just gonna keep his sheet over here. Seven. And I am not getting my. Here it is. Thank you. All right. Okay, I thought it was just me who couldn't see the initiative order. Yep, no, it, it, it wasn't popping up right. Um, I tinkered with some settings to try and fix some of the problems I was having. And uh, it... It, it worked, but that, it also broke other things. All oh, things. Um, eight and thirteen for the eel. All right. All right, Scab, you are up. Um, I gotta remember how to play this character. Now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, we got Big Eel, we got Mermaid Woman. That's it, right? Um, yeah, that you can see, yes. I'm going to head over this way. As they pass through the water, anything I need to do? Um, no. Okay. Um, I'm going to basically use my action to kind of check on this thing that's moving. Rubble. Um, what you see is a unconscious, mostly unconscious. Um, sort of stirring a little bit. Um, large uh, humanoid creature. And give me a oh, history check. Oh, yes. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm good at that too. Yeah, you're not sure what species this is, but it's a humanoid um, dressed in... Well, actually, you know what I'll do is I will allow um, Liam to tell us what he looks like. Uh, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> what you wearing? Uh, <laughs> what what am I wearing? I'm seven foot three. That's not a clothing, but okay. I'm 256 pounds. <laughs> I've got uh, a long, sort of ruddy, filthy jacket, leather straps sort of crossing over uh, the chest, uh, an incredible beard, um, and uh, um, sort of tufts of fur kind of running down, um, sort of a wide set nose. Uh, and across the back uh, of my skull, there's just sort of wisps of this sort of um, filthy, uh, scraggly hair. <clears throat> All right, and you won't be moving right away, but can you give me an, in an initiative roll? I would love to give you an initiative roll. <clears throat> Please do. He's like currently oh. unconscious or... He's, he seems unconscious, or at least very, very woozy. Um, he's lying prone under the stop. I just switched it. Okay. 
Um, can I search? Him? If you, um, <clears throat> you'd have to clear some of the rubble off of him, really. Is it just rubble, or is it actually like useful? No, there's like it's like it's like a bunch of sticks and things like that. It looks like old moldy cloth and leather bits, sort of like a makeshift blanket. But then there are also sticks and things around it as well. Okay, so as my bonus action, I'm going to point to Cork and be like, "You, uh, you said your name is Cork, right?" Yeah. Yeah. Um, go hit things, and I will give him aid for his next attack. Um, and then as my action, I'm going to start going through the rubble on top of this person to kind of get Ace checking for anything sparkly or could be worth some money and be working my way towards the body so I can investigate and see if I can find anything useful on the body. All right. Um, while you're doing that, then make a sleight of hand check. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so as you're rummaging through uh, and starting to pull things off, you he starts to stir and you find in his uh in his belongings uh you start to pull out a small box uh looks like a like a little closed box and as you do he grabs you by the hand and says and says uh am i conscious you're like coming out of it all right and somebody's like rummaging, rummaging around my yep. yep i'm looting the bodies all right Oh, no, hold on there, little oh, goblin. Okay, what? <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Uh, looting a corpse, which... A I ain't a corpse yet. Got a little bit of ways left to go for that one. Uh, oh, yeah, that's about six seconds. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Sir Percival, do you know what's happening? Not a clue. Okay, this they everybody came in. This nymph-like woman... Uh, asked them not to go near the body as they did. She summoned a water creature that hit Korik, and then now you see this gigantic eel kind of undulating, ready to start attacking. Well, obviously, it's like, I will defend you, fair folk, and I'm going to run in to attack it. Okay. Where to? Right there. Okay, um... As you, you do that, give me a quick perception check. Yes. At sir. disadvantage. Oh. Yep. Perception. Oh, wow. damn. <laughs> he perceives okay. everything. <clears throat> um, as you're running up and you're getting ready to attack, um, you do notice at the last second that there's a sharp drop off about two feet, two or three feet into the water, and it starts to go you get very deep, so you can't go much more than where you are in the water right now with swimming. Okay. Alright, got it. So I'd be like, Wah. Yep. I will fight you from here. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you're still within range, because he's staying towards the water's edge, so go ahead and uh, take a swing. I shall. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Okay. I attack. Oh, that's a hit. Back the worm. <clears throat> nice. Nine. Um, Bludgeon. <laughs> so you um, hit him. He's very quick. He almost gets out of the way in time, but you get a good shot in on him um, and shake him up a little bit. Um, do you, do you, you don't have a second attack, only, uh, the fighter. No, she, right? she does. How do you? Have a okay. Attack? F, oh. F, 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 yep. Yep. All right. I hit it again. There's an option of not doing it, but yeah, that's a hit. I smite thee. All right. This time, this time it's a little more glancing a blow. Um, you have hit him, um, but it, sort of glances. He is able to sort of dodge out of the way a little bit. Okay. Uh, he's a lot faster than you'd expect. 
because he's pretty big and he's just sort of undulating, but he's very <laughs> undulating. Undulating. It's a. It's the best word. It's right up there with moist. <clears throat> yep. All right, that's my um, turn. Okay, Korik. All right. I'm gonna go up here. All right, same thing. Make a perception check, please. With disadvantage. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Uh, a deck saving throw, please. Oh, yeah. Excellent. All right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so you go running up and you're staring at the eel and you're getting ready to take a shot at it. Uh, you don't notice that there is a, a sharp drop off um, and you lose your footing and you are you fall prone and slide into the water a little bit. Um, so you are you are currently prone. And about what would be almost waist deep in the water, you're just barely keeping your head above the water here. I'm surrounded by amateurs. <laughs> Well, I haven't moved my full amount, so can right. I just get back up? Um, yeah, you only moved about 50, uh, 15 feet there. Yeah. So, yeah, you can stand. Uh, you're in difficult terrain, though, because you're about knee deep, in the, a little over knee deep in the water. Yeah. Dang, you're wet. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yep. I don't need to uh, do anything else. Okay. Uh, I will attack. And All what right. does aid do to me? Uh, I'm giving you the help action, so you're get advantage on your attack. Okay. <laughs> oh, good thing you had advantage. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> it's a hit. Could use it for your perception. Um. Okay. I, does that actually work? Uh, if I gave it to you, as, if I did a help action as normal instead of helping you attack, um, then yes. But yeah. oh well. In any case, you yeah. hit it hard. He, it was it, the eel was sort of busy watching Sir Percival, and you just caught mm -hmm. it at the side at the side of its face with uh, your warhammer. Yep. Um, and it's starting to bleed out its mouth a little bit. Huzzah! Again. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 good. That's a hit. Yep, and another one straight across the head. He's uh, he's looking in kind of tough shape right now. All right. Well, I can't do anything else after that. Yep. Well, you just got its attention, and he's going to take uh, a couple of bite attacks at you. And just comes at you quickly. Oh. Oh. Broke Joe. The DM is dying. Yep. The robots got him. What do we do? Oh, no. Not the robots. Anything but the robots. <laughs> the internet didn't totally die, or else uh, this will be an interesting game. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh. Oh, there's Victor. <laughs> yes, I've been here. I've been here this whole time. Maybe it's but unable died. to do anything. So it's what happened my... to Joe was Victor took over the internet. Yep. <gasps> yeah. One at yeah, a time. <laughs> yes, of course. That's one exactly bit right. at a time. Yeah, I get one packet. Then I get to receive a packet and send one. Then you get to receive a packet. And send a packet. And then you switch again. Well, if he's doing that, I'm getting a drink. A hard one? Maybe. <laughs> well, everybody, we're going to have a little break here while we figure out what happened to our DM. <laughs> <sighs> he may still be running the dungeon. <laughs> he's still going <laughs> and he's asking questions. Nobody's answering. <laughs> <laughs> well... You would think that he would do a 
Well, what, Victor, why don't you go to find out what's going on? I think he has. That's why he's not answering. Maybe. Or maybe Victor's gone again. Oh, there he is. He's back. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was weird. So my cable modem just decided to completely reset itself. <laughs> well, that explains why Victor's up, because you have, like, two networks or something like that, right? Yep. Yeah, we have two cable modems in here, so... Uh, I just was sitting here talking. I'm like, nobody's Korok is not answering me. <laughs> nope. And I looked, and my my cable modem is is dancing lights. Lovely. All these status lights bouncing all over the place. But, <laughs> um, so uh, did the attack go through? No. The eels attack. We, we we kind of no, nope. it didn't. You said something. Okay, I don't see and anything. You, yeah. Last yep, thing we okay. did was Korok hit. Korok hit. Um, it got the eels' attention for sure. Um, and he was going to take a shot at you with a couple of bites. Yep, I heard that. Okay, and then, so, uh, yeah, it didn't show up on my thing. It must not have, uh, processed. Uh, 13 hit? No. Didn't think so. And then, another hit. Ah. <laughs> ah. No. <laughs> So yeah, he takes a swing and he almost get he actually almost gets you, uh, but you're able to s sort of hold it off and push it away with uh, your warhammer. Um, and as he does that, he is going to dive under the water. Um, if you want to, you and Sir Percival can take a attack of opportunity. Okay. I think you'll have to Jaeger Sir Percival for this one. Um, I should see her. Oh. She went to go get a drink. Oh, that's right. Come here. I'm right back. Oh, she's yep. there. You get an attack Sweet. of opportunity. Things are trying to run away from me. Terrible yep. mistake. The eel. That's rude. While well, I will smite it with my mace. Okay. And roll the damage. Wow. Yeah, you both hammer it pretty hard as it runs away. Um, and it gets under the water, but it's moving very slowly and just going deep. And it's leaving a trail of blood behind. Go on. Um, yep. Um, Axelman is off at the moment. Um, his, I don't know. Yeah, his computer is... Having Axelman. all kinds of issues. I see. I see. No, Axelman. Axelman. Sorry. Nope. I was thinking Zephyr. Axelman, your uh, your turn. I forgot Liam was here. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm prone. Yes. But I, I can get up if I want. Yep. All right. Uh, and do I see uh, the? Am I still under the influence? Um, you're very you. woozy. You're not. You're don't feel. You don't feel that mind uh you don't feel the same mind set towards uh the the woman that okay. you had been enthralled with uh yeah. when you encountered her do i know um, what happened or you have a pretty good sense uh given given your knowledge of uh magic okay um so it's, and yeah. also give me a nature check sure um Nature's his friend. Oh, yeah. You actually recognize what she is, especially now that she did that. Okay. Uh, this is this is an arid, uh, which is a form of a water dryad, uh, normally found in the Fae, which is, you know, an area that you as a druid are, have, have more than passing familiarity with. Yeah. Um, and you know, you realize, and you're just shaking your head going, I, it, that was stupid that I fell for that. Yeah. I can't um, believe she got you are, me. You are still a little woozy, so yep. you're going to have a disadvantage on any melee attack. Sure. Uh, all right, I'll use half my movement to stand. Okay. Uh, and the only thing I see at the moment is uh, the Nerid. Yep. Uh, yeah. All right. And and the these people everybody. surrounding that the, the surrounded you, including a goblin that was just going yeah. through your stuff. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> uh, 
okay. Uh, well, the thing that tried to mind control me is my priority over the thing that tried to rob me. <laughs> Fair enough. For right uh, now. Yeah, for right now. Um, so I'm not going to warn them about the Nerud. Um, because I don't know if they're friends, but I will mm -hmm. cast, f uh, let's see, is this a ranged attack? It is. I will cast Frostbite Yep. on her, 60 feet. Okay. Uh, Good, she will make a DC 16 con save. Okay. No damage. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Nothing being, being a being a watery creature, um, it starts to uh, she you see it start to frost around her a little bit, but she kind of shakes it off and she even gives you a little uh, a giggle. Uh, and then I'm going to use the last thirty feet, or sorry, fifteen feet of my movement to yep. sort of step back. I think uh, I'm just going to like squeeze past the uh, the gob. I'm like, uh, excuse me, uh, what, pardon me. You can almost step over him. Yeah. You, you, He's yeah, I kind of do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I helped you, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll right. get to that. <laughs> um, all right, the Nerid is up. She is very, very angry. You, you hurt, you hurt my pet. <sighs> and she moves over a little bit, takes a look at Korik, and uh sort of raises her hand back and flings and you see a gout of liquid coming at you. Uh, 18. 18 does not hit. It does not. You barely get out of the way. It hits um, It hits your armor though and you can hear a, a slight um, hissing noise. It's not really doing damage but it, it's trying to. Uh, it's pretty acidic, and it, it stings of the little bit of skin that did hit. Um, and she will um, move more towards the center of the uh, the pond. And so that would be Zephyr, if you're with us. Hello? Yep. You are up. All right. See, I think my roll 20 finally loaded. It shows you in, so. I missed out on half of what was going on, so we're fighting. Okay, so the, this Nerid, um, as far as you know, a nymph woman, uh, the giant eel went away. Uh, Korok and Sir Percival kind of beat the tar out of it uh All and right. she's very angry just flung what looked like acid at Korik and then moved to the center of the pool all right let me see one second deciding on a course of action also the entire map is black for me it is Wait, no, no, Martin, I can see. Okay. Yeah, we're in the far. Just we're not the right area. No. Assumption. I mean, most of All the right. things should be black, but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. So I am going to charge up. Robot. Charging. Charging. Just charge charging. to where? Move, move to where you're going. I'm moving. Okay. Um, you're out of melee range. You can't reach her from there. Okay. All right. So if you're gonna throw it, that's one thing. I can't throw the glaive. Okay. Um. Make a perception check as you move one more step forward. Unless either of you had said anything, but uh, all right, that's good enough. 
as you step forward, you see that there is a sharp drop off about two or three feet into the water. Uh -huh. um, but at the same time, because you rolled a uh, 21, uh, you do also notice that, um, let me see, am I in the right here? Along this area here, it looks shallower. It looks like um, there's only maybe a foot or two of water there. All right. And you can see like a walkway. All right. Okay. Um, but I think you're almost out of movement. Yeah, I am. I'm out of movement. So. All right. In that case, um, I'm just going to pass. Okay. For now. Until Are I you in a ready, sure. ready anything or? Yeah, I guess I'm ready. In a, uh, I, I don't know really I have anything to ready, to be honest. Well, I'm not much hold, ready. ready your action. Hold your action. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. All right, yeah, I'll go with that. Okay. All right. Um, scab. Yay. Um, so yeah, big dude got up and left. Um, I take it nothing else is of value around me? Um, there's a pile of leather and junk that's there, if, but ah. it's just a, you don't know what's in there. Ah, okay. Um... I will back over here as I walk by um, the big unknown scary hairy man I'll be like mm -hmm. I'm watching you <laughs> as I pull up my short bow and shoot near it okay nope nope I don't uh, nope nope you miss and hit the wall behind uh, and it, the arrow just sort of falls into the water. Lovely. Don't watch me. Watch what you're shooting at. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, feed the boys. Bonus action. We're going to give it now. Um, um, I don't know. I'll give it to First of all, I guess, be like, the fancy pants, get in there and kill that thing so we can leave, hopefully, through that door over there. Do I look like I'm going to get my armor wet? Damn well better. <laughs> Alright, so it's my turn? Mm-hmm. Well, then I would be like, well, well, thank you for your, for your generosity, but I don't get dirty, but I will bless you closest to me to aid me. So I will bless. bless. I did click it. It's not going through. I'm going to okay. spam, I have a feeling. Probably. <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. All the spells are gone. Five gone. times. I'm going to bless like a thousand times. It's going to go... Mega anyway, bless. I'm, anyway, I'm blessing... Oh, there it goes. Hold on. Have a tiny little screen. Okay, there. I'm blessing. Oh, yeah. oh no. Okay, the two closest to me and Scab. Okay. I'd be like, but I didn't sneeze. <laughs> Scab. You can hold that for later, <laughs> for uh, when you do. One of those types. Um, okay. <laughs> and that's my turn. Okay. Um, oh, my finger reset, too. Okay, Korik. All right. Well, there's a... Do I have an attack? I can't remember. I kill everything. And I'm going to say I don't have any ranged. So I will go there. Okay. And then I'll heal myself because I'm at less than half health. <laughs> you should jump Healing in the water. Would be good. I'll uh, use 20 points of lay on hands. Okay.
I'll be like, just so you're aware, I am not paying you to touch yourself. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're actually paying me, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, there's that. That's beside the point. <laughs> and I guess I can't ready an attack because I've already healed myself. So. Yeah, that would that would have been your action. Yeah. All right. It um, is uh, the Nerid. The Nerid is still mad at you for hurting her pet. So, uh, actually, um... oh, okay. Um, she will actually move up to you and she just sort of reaches out suddenly you don't didn't expect this and um she just sort of caresses your arm and i need you to make a constitution saving throw whoa now <laughs> all right uh okay so <laughs> yeah, DC was 13. Excellent. <laughs> nice. Um you see along your arm kind of a um watery form shape and it comes up and it tries to jump up at your face. Um but you are able to like push it away, uh, splash it away and bat it away. And it sort of falls back into the water. Um, and then she's going to move back away and you get an attack of opportunity. Well, you can do it. Then. Ah, yeah, it hits. Okay. Yeah, it hits and it, shakes her a little bit um uh and she shakes it shakes it off a little bit but you can see she's holding she's holding her shoulder a little bit she was she was definitely hurt by that uh and she said why why do you come here and do this um and then zephyr wait why is it no <laughs> it wasn't zephyr yeah, it's all messed up. I set it to descending. Like adding. Zether. Keeps adding numbers. Why is it adding numbers? There's no reason for it to be adding numbers. Good old roll 20. <laughs> it's still it's the same die. order. It's it's the same order, so that's fine. Somewhat, but now you're missing out on the eel and... Um... Well, the eel is... Don't worry about the eel. He okay. is under the water and... You haven't seen him. Well, after He's biding his time. That there is uh, uh, Axelman somewhere in there. I, I see Axelman. I see me after Z Zether, but me. Zether, Scab, Percival, Korak, Axelman. Yeah, but Axelman hasn't yeah. gone this round. <clears throat> yeah, it moved me around. That's weird. Okay. Oh, you were. He was nine. After Zether, well, I don't understand why it's doing that. There's no reason for it to be doing that. Weird. Good old World 20. Yeah, seriously. Um, all right. Actually, yeah, Zether moved, so um, Axelman. Uh, all right. Well. Uh, so it looks like these people are mostly focused on killing the Nerid, which is good. Um, um, is the door from where they came open? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm gonna be like, uh, hey guys, did you clear the way, uh, back there? As I'm, like, winding up a spell. Because I gotta get out of here. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do another, um... Yeah, we want to get out of here as well. I'm going to do another frostbite, actually. Okay. It 
16. Alright. And that is a con save. Oh, that one's a no. Alright, so yeah, that actually catches her off guard and freezes her a little bit. And she looks at you and just goes, please don't go. I am sorry. Please. And I will let you pass. <laughs> uh, she has disadvantage on her next weapon attack roll. Okay. Good to um, know. With frostbite. That's right. Good to know. All right. Um, then... That would be the eel's turn next. And then now Zether. All right. I am. I don't really know how I could get to her. Wim. Well, she's off of there anyway. Oh, that's her to the left? Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, um, right here. All right. Good to know. So if I go there, it doesn't drop off, right? Um, yes. Yes, it would. Um, by there, it would be um, probably waist deep, chest deep. I thought that this was elevated. Um, so this section up here is not elevated, but this is where you saw um, a solid path only about a foot or so under the water. All right, well, I'm going to head along the path. Okay. You can get to... Probably get to about here. All right. That, and then... I don't want to throw my trident, but that is my turn. Okay. And you're going to do the same thing, hold an attack? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's consistently reordering every time I click the advance. I have, based on what I remember, I have it where it's me, Percival, Koric, the Eel, yep. Zether, Nerid, and then Axelman. How I have it. Okay, then... What I remember, anyways. Yeah, that's fine. I'll move that around, and then Scab, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'll be like, uh, so you're going to let us pass? Yes, just don't hurt me or, or or my pet any longer. Do you know how to get out of here? I know how to get out of this room. Not helpful. What's to the, the east? The east? Oh, I haven't been there in a long time. It goes above the water. I don't go there anymore. Good enough for me. And I will proceed... Okay. Uh, so Percival. I don't know if she's here. Oh, she is. I'm here. All right. Um, I'm going to do, give a gracious bow. Thank you, fair creature. I bid you no. And I will follow Scab. Thank you for letting us beat you up. Being now <laughs> it was very you. thoughtful of you <laughs> to let us use you as a living punching bag. And that'd be my turn. Okay. Uh, Koric. All right. Well, I see them leaving, so... All right. And let's move on, then. You there, straggly guy. You gonna come with us? I... I, I yeah, 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 yeah. He's trying to find a way out. Well, get in line. Well, that's great news, because uh, so am I. It'll cost you. Sorry. Don't you worry about me. it. All right. Um, the Nairid is um, looking and starts to come over that way and says, but please, stay with me. Stay. 
and I need uh, Zether, Scab, Sir Percival, and Korik to all make um, wisdom saving throws. And your damn thing. No! Damn it! <laughs> Me and my feeble mind. You one. do have. Uh, well, I don't uh, think. So the two that failed, it's Less. not going to matter. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Zether, go ahead. Uh, Zether, roll a d4. Roll a d4. Roll a d4. Yep. Yeah. So Zether and Scab, you sort of stop short and think, wait, why don't we just stay here for a little while? It's actually kind of nice in here, and she doesn't seem really that bad, and you kind of feel bad for for hurting her and hurting her eel, and really was seemed like a bad thing to do. Um, Sir Percival and Corrick, you're trying to figure out why all of a sudden the other two kind of just stopped dead in their tracks, and they're kind of smiling. I don't think it's a surprise to know that they're going to try to uh, persuade us to be not leave. Okay. Yeah, at this um, point, I think Axelman is probably like, no, 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 don't listen to that. Don't listen to her. Yep, and it is, in fact, your turn, uh, Axelman. Uh, does she look wounded? Um, She took a good, a good solid hit from... Uh, Quaric, I think it was, um, but I mean, not badly. Hmm. Screw it. I'm going to call lightning. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Thanks for doing that when we're in the water. <laughs> I think you're not. I am. I'm not in the water. I'm okay. I'm in the no. water. It's fine. It's yeah, only I'm five on, feet. I'm on land. Well, she definitely saves that. Um, what does that do exactly? So a storm cloud appears uh, and centered on a point. So basically fills the room. Mm -hmm. um, and when I cast it, I can choose a point. Uh, which is her. Okay. And a bolt of lightning flashes down on her, uh, and creatures within five feet of that point make a deck save. All right. Since it's water, I'm going to say I'm going to double that. Um, and so that means Zether has to make the save as well. This is a dexterity save. All right. Yep. Yeah. Ouch. You have blessed. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Get two. There you hey, go. Hey! All right. All right. And so a, save is, a save is no damage? Save is, save is half. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and um, it is... is so it seven. Form? No, it's seven. Okay. Seven each. If that, if that did full damage, I would have been at one HP. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and I can maintain it and call lightning yep next round um zether you snap out of your 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 um haze mm -hmm. and um actually shoot her <laughs> <laughs> uh so do you scab yeah you actually shake out of it too and you realize that she's messing with your head again um, it seems to me like my computer's recovered. So, and cool. um, after that lightning bolt, she does seem a little more hurt. Oh wait, um, am I taking double or half damage? Half, half, half. You you made half of double. Nope, half of fourteen. So you have seven okay. seven damage. Uh, scab, you are up. Uh. She's not looking too hot. I mean, she's she's not on death's door, but she she's, she's had a she <laughs> well, steaming yeah, really that, actually. Um, the But yeah, she's she's uh she's not looking her best. Okay. Um.
Percival's after me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Um. Yeah, um, it's the order you see now, but I'm just not going to advance it because it keeps messing up every time stuff, I advance yeah. it. Can I have Sir Percival on her turn, his turn, if he wants, throw me at her? <laughs> All right. I would so be happy to. You're going to ask her to do that and hold an attack? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, well, you're willing, so... Um, do you do this, Sir Percival? Uh, you bet. <laughs> I would be happy to oblige you, small creature. Be throw well. All right. Um, let's do a athletics show. Do it. I'm ready. Did you fall in the water? I got my dagger. Okay. So you pick Scab up, and you're looking at the Nerid, and you throw. Um, you get to about here before you're starting to fall in the water do you want to take a swipe at her before oh, yeah. you actually fall short of her in the water i'll do that definitely okay uh make your melee attack ah. boom oh, oh, oh nice i think Roll you your damage oh look at those dice holy shit <laughs> all right so you don't kill her but tell me how this happened. Tell me how this happens. Um, well, like how do you do this? Dagger. Better be in Better slow motion. Uh, the added 2d10 is a constitution saving throw on her part. Um, DC 15. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so I get uh, thrown over. And as I'm throwing over, I pull out the, the, the dagger of venom. And just before I hit the water, I, like, try to stab into her and kind of fall in the water as I'm, like, drawing down. Okay. So you come in and you're kind of like um, the player would recognize this as, like, an Errol Flynn move along a sail. So you come in and as you're falling, you just drag the length of the dagger across across her form. And as you do... You don't see blood per se, but you see the clear, like watery liquid spilling everywhere. And she lets out this horrible scream. And the next thing you know, you're in the water. Um, and I need you to make a acrobatics check. We'll do acrobatics, why not? Sure, why not? Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, so you kind of belly flop into the water because you're busy extending out. And you hit, and you're sort of, ah, uh, and you just sink down, and you're about uh, five feet under the water at the end of this. Sweet. All right. Nice throw, Sir Percival. Yeah. Think of myself. Worth it. Uh, Korik. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess I'm just going to move across the uh, area over here. Mm-hmm. Is it is it a difficult terrain? It is difficult terrain here along this walkway. Yes. All right. So then I'll probably get to there. Okay. And I will ready in action to see if if she comes near me, I'll attack. Okay. So you'll take a swing at you'll attack her if she's in melee range. Yeah. Okay. Um, Zether. I'm getting out of the water in case more lightning happens. <laughs> um, you can only get to about here with your movement. Because right, it is fine. difficult terrain. Or you can just go through the that's door. Right. You like, there's it. a door there? Right behind you. Yeah, there's a door right there. Almost right behind I you. I kind of want to see what's on the other side, but I feel like that'd be a mistake considering <laughs> I'm at like below half health. Psh. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to open the door. All right, um, make a strength check, please. That's where I'm a Viking. Well, I hope you're a Viking. He's a gift, but close enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Space Viking. Uh, st okay, an 18. Space um, Viking. You Vikiki. push hard against the door, and you can see that it sort of gives some 
and start to split right where you know the sun splits in half and it's a double door uh but it doesn't open all the way you can hear it and it's making some like a cracking noise but that's about you can't really get it open um anything else on your turn no i'm good all right it is the narid's turn the narid is going to move away i wouldn't say she's bloody she's watery um and she's she's in very tough shape and she says please no more no more please i just wanted i wanted people to stay i am sorry and she sort of just sort of stops for a minute and looks very dejected um and says if you will just leave me and my pet alone i will I will give you my, some of my treasure. I will give you my treasure, and I will let you leave the door. But just please leave me and my my my, my pet alone. Let us live. Now you kiddos ain't gonna fall for that again, are you? I I do not appreciate <laughs> this young creature's woman things lies. I decide to leave. So I'm gonna. I'm well, gonna it's run. it's uh. Axelman's turn first, actually. Actual in the oh, we're still in combat. Order. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, well it's, he's we'll, declared we'll to leave. Suitable. He's just he's standing there. I declare okay. to leave. He's just standing there. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can have a vocal response, but the next action yeah, is yeah, uh, yeah. Axel. Gotcha. Nope. Gotcha. Uh, so you said that my uh, lightning was traveling twice as far. It, it looked like in the water, it was hurting people further away than you expected. Okay. Uh, I guess what I'll do as is a, I'll... As a player, yes, I'll say it goes about twice as far. Okay. I'll call my lightning then uh, at a spot sort of off from her. Okay. So that... Trying to make it so that only she's making the deck save. Okay. All right. Cast me a spell, Scraggles. Uh, it's the same spell... So DC uh, yeah, 16. but you have to roll. Yeah, but you roll the D. Uh, the oh, okay. Uh, so you can do a three D ten, just a three D ten if you want. Okay. All right. Um, oh, that is a fail. Okay, so how do you do this? How'd she die? Uh. So as the. I see the goblin like scrabbling in the water and making uh, some headway, but everyone else appears to be trying to escape. Um, and then we were like, "Really? She's right!" And I just like pull my arm down, and the lightning just follows with the movement. Yep. Um, and uh, if I can, I'd like to just vaporize her head. <laughs> so, um, you know what? Give me an arcane roll. Arcana? Yeah. Arcana roll. All right. Or nature. Actually, either one, because it's lightning and you're a druid. Uh, ooh. Well, I guess I'll take the nature then. Okay. So you call the lightning down and you see just her body just convulses and you see our, her arm and body just fill with like, veins of electricity. And she lets out this gurgling, high-pitched scream uh and as she does so you twist your hand to try and you know summon the lightning to burst open her head and you do so and suddenly she just splits in half and her body explodes in the middle <laughs> and she just sort of heals over and you can sort of see her floating in the water um uh just sort of bobbing at the at this point all right um so i'm like well it wasn't quite as elegant as i would have liked but uh can't argue with the results hey you guys over there um and i'm gonna try and catch up to them okay all right yeah and we'll we'll say it's out of combat um do i see anything in the water other than the eel um 
I guess make a to... perception check. Are you under the? Are you looking from above the water? Or are you looking it was, from underneath? It's like five feet under, right? Yeah, you're about five feet down right yeah, now. Yeah, so I'll so you're still looking. looking from there. Okay. Whoop, Chad. It's hard to tell. Um, there is the glow in the water that sort of um, permeates the water as well as the glow from the, the light source above. The downside of that is, though, after about 10 feet or so, it's a little cloudy and it's a little murky from the glow and it's hard to see. Uh, it looks like it goes down about another maybe 10 feet or so. Okay. Uh, and you do see you do see on the bottom, actually, even with that roll, um, just the the eel just sort of curled up on, on into itself. Okay. On, on the very bottom. I'm going to extend my 10-foot pole into the water towards the goblin just in case it can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> um. You would touch him with a 10-foot pole. Yep. Even a goblin. <laughs> uh... Okay, uh, in that case, I guess if I don't see much of anything else with the eel, I will swim back up. And I guess as I swim back up, do I see the Nereid kind of like thinking? Or is she floating? Um, kind of both, sort of um, bobbing. And you see that that shawl like mantle thing she was wearing, um, sort of slowly sinking down into the depths. I will definitely grab that. Um,. That is a good swim away if you want to make an athletics check. Done. That's where I'm not awake. Where's Caleb? <laughs> yeah, you start to swim down after it, um, and you can see it, but you've been under the water a little bit, and your your lungs are starting to burn a, a little, and you just can't get there quickly, and you've got to go up to the surface. I got 15 constitution. I can hold my breath. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but not with that, that, that athletics check. You can't. Fine. I'll go back up. Um, actually, make one more perception roll while you are doing that, too. Maybe I'll get something good. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> nope. Curse of Caleb lives uh, on. <laughs> uh, and from the swimming, you are about uh, here-ish now. Yeah, I'll swim back up. Um, am I able to make more attempts of getting the show? Yeah, yeah. You just couldn't get to it in time, and you just you were sort of reaching for it, but you were just running out of energy. Okay. Um, I think it's dead. Little little guy, I mean, come back. Yeah, want. but there's 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 something that whatever she was wearing, it's it's going down. I'm I'm gonna try and get it. Uh, all right. You can go that deep. Um. Sure. If you need, you need it, to go deeper. If I can come with you, that's a different. You're deal. not going to rob me anymore. <laughs> I'll go get it for you. And you'll give it to me. Yeah, if you're not going to try to rob me again. Deal. All right. You was you want her a little pashmina or something? Yeah, whatever the the scarf thingy that she was wearing or whatever. I don't know. Look flustered. All right. What if that eel gets me? Uh, I saw the eel. It's kind of crying in the corner. It's fine. All right. All right. We got ourselves a deal then, right? You get yourselves out of here. I'm going to follow you out. We'll go our separate ways. I mean, you can follow us. Whether we know the way out or not is up in the air still. Oh, okay. So you're in the same situation I am. Great. I will. Well, I'm on the merrier. Okay, here we go. I'm going to dive in and turn into a reef shark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 what, 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 I'm getting out of here. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, actually, you know what, uh, Scab, make a, uh, make a wisdom wisdom saving throw there. Oh, that's, with how I'm rolling tonight, probably one. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Ah! And, and Two you ones, start but... swimming to the, uh, swimming to the shore. You're not in full panic, but you're like, what the God damn? And you're just, <laughs> you're just not, you're just getting the hell out of the water. First he was dead, then he was not dead, now he's a fucking fish, like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, um... What the hell is going on here? So, Axelman, you swim down, um, you see the the eel, and it's about 15, maybe almost 20 feet deep. Uh, you see him over in the corner. He's sort of, like, here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but he's just sort of curled up, and you see there's blood and things like that. He's still alive, but he's not moving. He is just okay. sort of sitting back. Um, uh, make a perception check from here. Sure. Perception. With advantage, because you're in the water. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, actually, should I be making that with the shark stats? Um, no, no, we'll do it with the, the okay. stats for now. Uh, unless you have a shark stat ready. I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I said with advantage. Got it, okay. Um, so you see, um, the, the mantle, the, the scarf sort of drifting away. Uh, behind that, also, you see what looks like a hollowed out area, um, about here that goes, looks like it goes back maybe another five, ten feet. Hmm. Before, and you can't see anything beyond that. It's it's dark. All right. Um, uh, does my dark vision count? Does not when you're in a shark. Okay. Uh, I'm going to grab the pashmina in my mouth. Yep. And I'm going to swim into that little corridor a little bit. Okay. Nose around. Okay, so you go into there, and it's a small tunnel. And you can see it sort of arcs upward. And then there's air. You can't see what's beyond that, but you see there's a there's there's air as there's sort of ripples and waves, and the tunnel goes up a little more and out of the water. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna go back. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get to the surface, and I've got the uh, <laughs> I've got this like shawl in my <laughs> shark mouth. I'm like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but with my tail, I'm like trying to like beckon the goblin to like come and grab my tail <laughs> um oh my god uh <laughs> anybody that wants to make an intelligence check oh gosh i mean it's not bad I can, I, I, i'll try it's not bad hey oh, i understood yeah yeah, yeah, you're, you're scared, like, what the, get that shark's got, like, seizing here. As Zether has no idea what the hell's going on, he's like, why is there a shark in the water? <laughs> um, uh, Korik, you, like, you, you see him, he's trying to, like, beckon and, and, and say, come on in. Uh, um, and he's got, he's got the cloth in his shark mouth, too. So it's kind of really the most, one of the most bizarre sights you think you have ever oh seen in your God, entire life. The cloth thingy is killing. Our shark friend. <laughs> so where is Axelman um, right so now? Like, right in the middle. Say. Well, why don't uh, you move the token? I will. Because I was Jeez. a shark. Yeah. I've got yeah, the stats well... pulled up now too. Yeah, okay. I was looking at him. <laughs> yeah. Would it have made a big difference in the role? Um. It would. For the perception, it would. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh well. Right, you ended well, up seeing you ended up seeing the tunnel anyways. Um, all right. So like, uh, Although actually, no, I have blind sight of thirty feet. Okay. As a reef shark. I'll turn to the others. Be like, are you, uh, are we saving him? Are we leaving him? I mean, he's trying to get the shawl from me, which is great. But he, I mean, if it dies from wants... him, maybe I can just get it from him there and here. And... I turn to a uh, Axelman, the shark. Yeah. Do I know he turned into a shark? Yeah, you saw that I... happen. All right. It still freak you all the hell out. Super anamorph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to talk to Axel. Say to Axelman, you, you want us to follow you or something? He's a shark. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see the shark sort of rear out of the water a little bit, almost like a a, a, a dolphin in a dolphin show, yeah. and just sort of like wave its head and flapping. Her fins around, trying to stay out of the water. The cloth is going all over its face at this point. Oh my god, he's choking <laughs> like I'm caught on the, in the cloth. Six pack. Yeah, he's yeah. smothering him. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, can you carry me, or do you want someone lighter? Um, if a shark could shrug, 
<laughs> I take out a dagger. I can just put him out of his misery. He's losing. No, to don't him. do that. Oh, don't no. do that. But okay. All right. Um, I'll beckon you to come over here. Mm -hmm. I do. Come over here. I swizzle take, up to the side. I'll take the uh, shawl. What was it? Uh, it's, yeah, it's it's a it's a mean, long cloth like a mantle or a. All right. Well, I'll take that. I'll take that out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, toss it over to Scab. Yeah. Because I heard Good. that. And then <laughs> I'll jump on your back. <laughs> Great. Now go invisible. <laughs> yeah. Not here. Uh, oh, is it scritches on the back if you can't breathe anymore? <laughs> uh, we haven't worked that out. <laughs> okay. Um. Um, yeah, so... So presumably I move half as slow. Yep. But I have a swim speed of 40, so if I dash... Yeah. Yeah, you can get maybe back Maybe we can down make there. him some headway? Okay. We can, you can get back down to at least the opening of the tunnel in a turn. At the very least, if I can show you the opening of the tunnel exists, then you'll be able to be like, okay, do we want to go in there or not? So I'll just hover at the mouth of the entrance a little bit, and uh, so Korak, what you can see here is it's a little dimmer. You're you're a little dimmer. The light's a little dimmer here. It's got, and you can see there's sort of like little bits of wheat seaweed or something. Um, but you see a round hole going uh, with a tunnel going off into the darkness. All right. Uh, I'll. Pat you on the back, then. Is it like a pat to like surface or to continue? Uh, that's <laughs> up to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I bolt into the tunnel and go for the air. All right. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so this is a this was this is kind of a dash. Uh, so give me a strength check, Corey. Strength check. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. You, you're able to hold on. Uh, you, you're holding onto the dorsal fin, and you're like, ah, oh, jeez. And you oh, actually God. even let a little air out as you're like, Wah! Um But you get into the tunnel. Do you, do you actually break the surface of the water, uh, Axelman? I probably do, yeah. Yeah, okay. So you burst out of the water, um, and you land in on a stone, a rough natural stone uh, floor. Uh you don't see a thing, Korak. It is pitch black in here. There's a little glow coming from the water that gives you about five feet of stone space that you can see. Um, and the, you can feel a wall over to one side of where you are. But um, Other than that, it's pretty dark in here. Fantastic. And you do see a shark lying on the, on the stone, just sort of sitting there. <laughs> Flailing a little bit. Give him some water. Uh, <laughs> all right. Then I guess I'll try to push him back into the water. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you let him? Yeah, I'll just try to roll with it. Ah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna sort of hang out in the shallows a little bit and and wait to see if uh, okay. You, you, you can just sort of hover because there's not yeah. a lot of room. It's only about uh, about eight feet across total. Yeah. Um. All right, Korik. So even with dark vision, you I do not have hard, dark vision. You are a halfling. Don't halflings have dark nope. vision? Oh, no, right. Not. But I do have the the belt, so I do have dark. Oh, vision. that's right. I forgot about your belt. So okay, Our yeah, you do see. Kind. You do see. Ooh. That's right. I totally. So do you have a beard? I know it's waiting for that. We I haven't rolled. Have we haven't rolled that yet. Nice. But he does have a slight beard. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say I do have a beard because I've had it for a while. Okay. Fair enough. Um. You know what? We're roll, friends. Then. Roll a d100 then. <laughs> All right. Just for laughs. Well. Yeah, it's a it's a decent beard. It's not glorious but it's really 
off-putting on a halfling it, at first. You're like, the hell? Because halflings generally don't have beards like this. Um, yeah. Looks like you might be able to braid a little bit if you really wanted to. Well, but... Sideburns for days, but beards. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so what you see in the room is uh, a room about ooh, 20, 30 feet across, uh, almost almost perfectly circular, but in a natural kind of way. Uh, it doesn't look like it was constructed. It just sort of formed mm -hmm. like this. Um, in one corner, you see uh, what looks like uh, water, but also um, cushions floating in the water and a small pool. Uh, and you also see off to the side a small uh, series of natural shelves that have uh, a few items on it. It looks like uh, some little statues and a couple of other things. Um but they're about 15 feet away. You can't really make it out too clearly at this point. All right. Well, I'll be cautious and go over there. I'll say to uh, Axelman, hold on. I'll be right back. Splash, splash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shark nod. <laughs> Hoo-ha-ha. -ha. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. So, yes, you do see... Um, uh, a half dozen or so little... Um, it's hard to tell because it's dark vision, so it's it's gray. Yeah, but it looks like they're metal uh, little statuettes, and they're fairly heavy. So your best get is probably their gold, and they're little. Uh, they're very similar to the little statues that you saw in that first room behind your nemesis door. Ah, uh, the same yes. kind of carved uh, images of the the gods. Um, there's about a, there's a, there's six of those. Uh, you also see a golden, looks like a, a mask that kind of looks like one of the stat, like if you put it on, you'd be Halloween masking one of those statues. Right. Um, you also have, uh, you see a couple of, um, crystal tubes and you can't really tell in the darkness exactly what they are. Um, and another little, a very little statue, though, that is also metal, but it doesn't feel quite as heavy. All right. I have my backpack with me, I assume. Uh, sure, unless you left it behind someplace, which I wouldn't expect you to have. All right. I'm just going to open the backpack, mm -hmm. put everything in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And then close it up. <laughs> okay. Take everything and then go. Okay. Um, you know what? While you're doing that, make a perception check. Uh, what? Perception? Perception, yeah. Oh! <laughs> I assume I'm okay. not blessed anymore. Uh, no, it would have worn off by now. That's only a minute. Yeah. Um... Okay, yeah, so you've emptied the shelves, you've got all those things. So six, uh, we'll say six gold statues, the two crystal tubes, and the smaller metal statue. Okay. Um, and so that was the, the shelf area. And you said there's pillows in the water or something? So there's what looks like a little pool but there's also cushions like you, Jordan, would recognize them kind of like um, pool cushions or, you know, floaties. But okay. they're, they they look more comfortable than like a blow up floaty. All right. Well, I'll examine them. OK, uh, give me a perception check on that then. That's a lot better. Yeah. 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 OK. So you go over, and it, when you get over there, it's pretty obvious um, that this is probably where the Nirid probably would sleep or rest. Um, and as you get closer and you start moving the cushions around to take a look at them, you also see along the back end of this pool another small little um, nook area. Uh, and in that, uh, on there, you see a bottle 
and a pair of look like leather gloves. All right. Um, the cushions right. themselves are just really, really nicely made, but the old um, cushions made to be in water. All right. Well, I'll leave those alone. Okay. I don't think I need cushions. Okay. And I'll just take the gloves and the bottle. Okay. Um, and as you pick up the gloves, a small um, uh, metal ring falls out and clinks along the stone. And uh, you can take that too if you'd like. Okay. All right. Anything else? I don't think so. There's nothing else that I could see. Um, nothing else that jumps out at you, know. All right, then let's go back. All right. So you just <laughs> jump back onto the shark. What are you doing here? Do uh, do 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 do. do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah, shark. just go over to the shark, and I'll be like, "All right, Axel, we're gonna get going. Nothing else." Swish. In I really regret not having the Jaws theme queued up. <laughs> Copyright be damned. Yeah. We're gone for like 20 minutes and then we come back and we stalk the goblin. <laughs> <laughs> um, meanwhile, while they're down there doing this, what is everybody doing up top? I am inspecting the Pajmina shawl mantle thing. All right. So uh, Korok hands you the shawl. Um, and then jumps on the shark, and they go off under the, under the water. You start to take a look at it, and it's a it's a very delicate. It feels almost delicate, um, and almost slick. Not just because it's wet, but it uh, it just feels like you're, like you're holding something. You're trying to hold onto water in a lot of ways. Um, so you start looking through it, and give me a um, investigation check because you're actually holding it, looking through it. Okay. Um, it's a nicely made little thing, but it seems a little weird. Um, and as you're holding it, though, it just sort of um, starts to dissolve. And then it's like foam and then just falls out of your hands and spreads across the water as foam and just sort of dissipates. Lovely. Wonderful. That was pointless. <laughs> well, what's in this door? All right. Uh, you can take a look at the door if you you and um, Zether. Does it look like a nice door? It does. It's definitely um, old, and you can see there's water. Um, you, know, you can see like limestone runnings from the ceiling have got a gun on it and if you take a look it's kind of uh encrusted here and there uh for some reason the sun part doesn't seem to have a lot on it but it's still just stone yeah. um and then from there give me a either investigation or perception here totally perception yeah okay um you notice that it does have a locking mechanism holding it shut at the middle. Um, and while you're taking a look at it, you also notice the 22 uh, off to the side here. There's a little square indentation stone that has um, a different pattern to the encrusting of the limestone and water grid on it. So kind of like, is it out from the wall, or is it like a... No, it's it's sort of inset just a little bit. Like, maybe a quarter inch deep. Okay. Um... Is this some kind of, like, button, maybe? Should we touch it? Um, if you want to touch it, go ahead. Otherwise, you can make an investigation check to dig at it a little bit. I'll investigate it. I won't investigate it. It looks like it's a stone. Maybe it pushes in. You don't know. It 
Fancy Pants, you want to touch this? Wow. There's a good pickup line. <laughs> Which, who is Fancy Pants you're talking to? First of all. I guess nobody's here anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Percival's muted. Maybe yeah, that's why. Might Percival be away or muted. doing something. I don't know. Um, um, sorry, I'm having uh, audio issues, too. It keeps slowing okay. down and catching up. So um, you're pew, pew, pew. Do you want pew, to pew, go pew. In, and touch the stone that he's offering you? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I appreciate the offer, but I will did you, decline. Did you hear the description? Were you able to catch the description? Uh, what was that? So you're roboting again. Um, it is a small square stone kind of inset into the wall slightly next to the door. Uh, fine. I'll go up and touch the door. The door or the stone? Stone, sorry. Okay. Um, it feels like it could push in a little bit. It's going to take a little bit of effort, though. I will use my great muscular might and push it in. All right, <laughs> strength. Do a strength check. Strength check. Yep. You push it. You push, and it gives a little bit. It binds up, and you can feel all of a sudden it. It, it breaks and you hear like a stone breaking and it pushes in and the two doors sort of swing open about a foot and a half. Whoa. Um, at about, at about that time, um, is when you see, uh, the shark and, uh, Korik appear out of the water. And what are you guys doing? You are going to stalk him. Uh, I don't know how stocky I can be with a, a are you, you're a halfling, halfling, halfling? right? Yeah. Um, um, if you want to make a stealth check with disadvantage, uh, uh, dexterity, I guess. No, I'll just, I'll just swim up to the side and okay. let the halfling off. Uh, and then there's water over where the shallow is. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I will, I will un, uh, shape shift. Okay. Ah, there we go. It's always good to get a little swim in. Uh, <laughs> find anything uh, good there? Uh, maybe. Uh, All right. I just um, sort of took everything. Yeah, good, good. Um. So, do you want to go through them now, or just leave them in your backpack? Uh, I'd rather go to somewhere I'm not staying in water. Okay. <laughs> Um, let me see what, yeah, you're not getting that. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I have to do it by reveal now. Great. <laughs> Indoors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you see is, as the doors open, a tunnel uh, that is back to the stone-carved uh, passages you've been seeing um, with water basically going up the but you see there's a slight rise to the floor and about mm, 40 feet or so up up the passageway it turns a corner but it's oh there's almost no water there it's it's just a, a very thin amount of water at that point look more water yay do we want to uh, go up this way or go back to somewhere we can rest is anyone feeling the need for rest well I'm alright I fine. had a good nap in that pile of garbage <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you've shaken off the, the wooziness right. disadvantage is gone so other than spending an hour at the first door forever or hour and a half whatever it was how long do we think we've been in here it's really hard to tell because you don't have like sunlight or a reference. Um, uh, but probably uh, all told, maybe about an hour or so. Okay. So beyond that. So about two hours total. Uh, 
Because you had been walking kind of cautiously through some of those other areas. Yeah. So uh, we could probably find some drier places to stay and then rest there. Yep. I agree. I, for one, am waterlogged. Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, I will move up. You want to go backwards or I'm forwards? I would say forwards. Always forwards. Forwards. Okay. I like this guy. Uh, I'll move in looking for traps. Okay. Um, perception check. I'm going to ride up. Click it. And my rolls are yeah. horrible today. Yeah, you don't see anything. That's great. Everything's fine. Yep. <laughs> Keep on moving. Uh, the water's slowly getting uh, shallow, uh, shallower, too, as you're going. It's yeah. it's going up. I'm going to stop here and kind of peek around the corner as well to see what I see. Okay. Um, Is this a wall? Yeah, I'll I'll make it a little larger. So you look up there, the water ends, the slope continues up a little bit and levels off just before a set of stairs. I want to look all around for any kind of like stone-shaped logs that might come out from the ceilings or the walls. <laughs> okay. Uh, same thing. Nope. Roll of perception. And my rules. You can't see anything. Jeez. Everything's good. <laughs> you know, you're looking around and looking around, and it's kind of gross, and uh, you're just also happy to be on dry land, so you're kind of shaking the water out of you. Yep. and Bringing out my non-existent shawl. Yep. Like, ah, uh, dry land. Well, I mean, dry stone, I guess. Whatever this is. Lightly damp stone. Yeah. Oh. Nope, he's dead. <laughs> oh, Zether no. died! Oh. <laughs> what happened? Oh, no. It's, so, roll 20 was lagging a little bit, and I double clicked. Um, uh, so, we're resting here. We've come to yet another door. Well, let's go up on the steps, and then uh, rest. Sure. I will check the stairs. Any kind of triggers. Okay. I'm paranoid now. Don't worry, Scab. I'll watch your back. Um. Yeah, you don't see anything. Oh. Cool. It's a. It's a. It's stone steps like you had seen before, carved into. Uh, carved into stone blocks. Lovely. It, it looks pretty solid. I sit on the first one and start eating some rations. <clears throat> Okay, so you're going to take a short rest. I guess that's what we're doing. All right. Yeah. If you want to uh, roll some, burn up some hit dice, please feel free. Uh, and done. All right, um, Seth is going to use a couple here. Uh, shoot, I was muted. Um, hey. I'm going to oh. log. I'm having way too many issues. It's just not degrading the quality of the stream. And okay, I'm sorry. No worries. No worries. I'll well, I'll I'll run you for the hair Vic if you want. Thank you. Much appreciated. Good night, okay. guys. Hi. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. Just it's too too many issues. Good night. Day of issues. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It was working all fine, and then it's been the connection's been going in and out for him. Um. All right. So you sit, have a little bit of food, chill out. Um and sort of look at this large seven foot tall creature that turned into a shark a minute ago so how did you get here uh front door there's a front door there's a front door 
Oh yeah, yeah. Mayor, just know don't... where said front door is. Uh, no. You do not. Uh, came in, big old door. Got curious, you see, and uh, well, it closed behind me. Uh, wander around a little bit. Uh, heard some fancy music, listened to that for a while, and that's about all I remember. Uh, we dealt with that. So next uh, is uh, finding our way back where I once came from. Yeah. How long um, was a little bit? You, you vaguely, you vaguely remember uh, when you came in. There was a long hallway, and it was filled with little like diorama scenes as you came through. Okay, I'll describe that. Yeah. Um, and then you wandered around a bit, and that's pretty much all you can remember because you're still mm -hmm. a little blurry from the spell. And you're still pissed off that you fell for that because you're just kicking yourself constantly here. Yeah. <laughs> that diorama room, was the door open? Uh, I think mm -hmm. it was for me, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It wasn't for long. But... Gotcha. Hmm. Wonderful. You thinking that's where we came in? Most definitely. Oh, so right. we're not looking for where I came from. We're looking for something new, huh? Yep. Great. Yeah, that one collapsed. <clears throat> oh, well. We fell in from the top. Oh, so you wasn't even uh, looking to get in here, huh? Nope. You're kind of an odd-looking group, you know that? Um, Zephyr turns and sort of goes, you know, sort of bristles at that and is like, I am not from. Oh, I can tell that. You're like a big goblin, yeah? Uh, I'm not a goblin. I take offense to that. <laughs> I didn't mean no offense. I believe you, but that is a mistake few make more than once. Mm, I understand. I understand. Well, I won't be doing that one again. <laughs> uh, listen to me, my, uh, I ain't learning nothing if my jaws are flapping. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Um, find a way out. Well, I say we start looking at uh, their next door. Sure. Are we all done here? Uh, did everybody roll hit dice that wanted to? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I, yeah. Cool. Yep. All right. All right. So move forward. Oh, actually, uh, mm -hmm. on that long rest, uh, can I lean over to uh, was it Coric Jordan? Your character's name? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. lean over to you, and I'll say. Uh, by the way, uh, most people uh, call me Axelman. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Coric. Hey, uh, I got a quick question. Uh, those fancy gloves you found up there. You had a chance to look at those? Uh, I think I'll look at them during the break. So during that that short rest, you'll go through the stuff? Yeah, yeah okay. I'll do that. Okay, so yeah, the, the six statues of the little gods and goddesses um, are definitely gold. Um, you take a good look at them. They're probably about... You could probably get about 50 gold each for them. Okay. Um, the mask is a little heavier... And it is a it is a deeply inlaid golden mask. Um, it's very very nicely crafted, a uh, little tarnished from all the moisture and everything like that. Uh, but you bet you could probably get about 200, 250 gold pieces for those for this thing. Um, you have two tubes. They're they're crystal, but they're very smooth crystal, and looks like there are caps on either end. Um, and then there's a bottle holding a kind of viscous liquid uh, and the gloves that are uh, remarkably in remarkably good shape. For le They are made of leather, but they don't seem to be affected by the moisture or anything at all. What you got there? And the ring? Uh, the ring is a small silver ring with uh, initials uh, K R and slightly engraved in the inside. So it's a it's a silver ring, maybe a couple. Of... 
piece is not it's not fancy all right got some fancy stuff eh yeah i found this uh in the in a chamber that belonged to the nerd oh so that's where you and the fish boy went to i right, gotcha do the uh crystal tubes look like they can open um yeah probably if you want to make an investigation check maybe <laughs> Um, yeah, it looks like there's like a, a one end, one of each, each end has like a cap on it. Um, and it looks like one of them might be able to open if you wanted to give it a try. Sure. Why not? Now I'm going to stand back a little bit before wait, you open it. What are you doing? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so you go to open it and make a, make a strength check on this actually. Strength check. All right. Oh, oh, no, that's actually good. Um, You give it a little and it's hard to go and you give it a little more. You don't want to break it, though, because you can feel it it's like it is crystal and you it does pop free a little bit. Um, If you had been rolling with advantage, you actually would have broken the crystal. Uh. <laughs> Amazing. Um. And you look in, and there is inside. Uh, there's some. There's water and everything. It sort of pours out, and looks like mushy paper, or like slimy. What used to be paper inside hmm. this uh, tube. Looks like a fancy canister. Well, it was something. Yeah, it's probably worth um, it. I'll take it. Um, actually, you and Sir Percival can make a, uh, uh, religion or arcana check. Okay. Hi. Hey, I'm you're both proficient. Paladins. Religion or... Yeah. Hey. So, you, you know, you, you kind of know what this probably oh. is. Um, <laughs> and you definitely really know. Does. You definitely I know. know. You, you've seen this type of thing before, not made of this kind of a, a nice crystal, but these are cases that would hold magical scrolls. Um, and it looks like it probably did at one point in time until the water had been in there for a long time. Hmm. Yeah, again, the, you probably don't need them. They're worthless. I'll take them off your hands and I'll get a couple gold for them, but it's nothing. Hey, where'd that uh, pashmina I gave you go? That thing like disintegrated. It? Oh, kind of like the contents of that little thing, huh? Uh, probably, yeah, kind of, yeah, maybe. Mm. I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Eh, it's worth a shot. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you just going to hold on to everything? What do you... Stop yeah. Going? Yeah, See, I was asking you about I was asking you about the gloves. Did you find anything out specifically? Uh, they're nice leather gloves. They're really, Markable really nice shape. leather gloves. Yeah. All right. Are they like fancy gloves? Kind of. Okay. But the most remarkable thing about them is that they look like they've been in, in there for a long time, but they look almost brand new. Okay, gotcha. Axelman would be interested in it if they looked like a good sturdy pair of work gloves. Yeah, these um, are these are nice. These are nice, sturdy. But if they have like any embellishment on them at all, he goes like, um, "You can take a look at them <laughs> if you want." Uh, if yeah. Cork, yeah, okay, I'll let you look at them. I assume I'm wearing gauntlets, so yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you want me to roll? Um, uh, you can roll a investigation. All right, because you're looking through them and looking over them. Yeah, you notice that. They're really nicely made, and along the cuffs of each and inside of the palm, there are small embroidered, you recognize as runes. Mm. Uh, you don't know what they are. You don't necessarily recognize them, but there is there is what you think is uh, rolling an arcana check, actually. Yeah, there's some sort of enchantment on this. You're not really sure what it is. All right. So I'll look at that and I'll go, oh, geez, these are real fancy. Uh, any of you types, uh, uh, you know, one of the book people? Yep. Nope, we're not. 
<laughs> I get ready to like toss them over to the goblin. <laughs> and Corin's yeah. like, nope. <laughs> You're not gonna wear them anyways. You're full metal. I can take off the gauntlets and put them on, then put the gauntlets back on. Uh, you cannot actually. If you are, if you, are you actually going to try that? Sure. <laughs> okay. So you put them, you put them on, but you cannot get the gauntlet. You're not going to get the gauntlets over them. They're a good sturdy leather. They're flexible, and you're not like hindered by them. But you're not going to be able to get the gauntlets on over them. The at least do I can probably use them. Leaving the gauntlets off, do it does anything it to my you. AC? No. All right, I'm okay with that. If they <laughs> feel sturdy, mm -hmm. I'll just give them to the scab. Yeah. Now you're <laughs> thinking proper. <laughs> okay. Yeah, them things are way too fancy. I just get them all locked up. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I'll get a couple gold for them. It's fine. All right, um, you're just holding on to them, Scab. Are you going to put them on or put them in your bag? Or... Uh, I'll put them on. Okay, um, you go to put them on, and they were just on Korok's hand. Um, and you put them on, and your hands are smaller. Yeah. Um, and as you put them on, it seems to sort of grip your hands and adjust to your size. Fancy. That's what I said, yeah. <laughs> I like fancy. Well, I'll All keep right. that in mind. If you see anything else fancy, and I uh, flap a little shark tail at you, follow me. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> now that you're not <laughs> suffocating by a pashmina. <laughs> okay, um, and that's towards the end of the rest, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, moving forward, then. Oh. Mm -hmm. I will investigate the door. All right, and Zether is following just slightly behind. Uh, were you ch uh, checking the hallway or just going to the door? I'm checking the hallway as well. Um, all right, give a perception check. You no, know me, I roll low. Um, yeah, you don't really see much. It's a it's a car stone carved floor, uh, but you do notice that the tiles are a little um, nicer. Than you had seen in the in the other areas, uh, at the top of the stairs, they're almost like flagstones, and they're fitted together a little more tightly. Um, but you don't see anything out of the ordinary. It doesn't look like there's any traps or anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would that also include the door, or do I roll for the door? Uh, the door is a separate roll. Yeah. Roll it. Yeah. Look at all those low it's numbers. A, <laughs> it's it's a door. There's a. Uh, looks like a, a latch knob in the middle. Um, the door itself is actually very plain with uh, it's got the same sort of sun pattern at the top, but it's not very ornately carved. It isn't colored. It's just in the stone. Um, but that's all you see. Like, well, we got a door here. Who would like to open it? Uh, any obvious handles on it or anything like that? The yeah, there's in a the middle. There's a little latch knob. Uh, okay. Does it look like it turns or like pulls? Uh, turns. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I guess uh, it can go over there to uh Well, Zephyr is already there, and no. he'll yeah. he can he'll just step forward and. Oh, this is foolish. Open it and turns it, and it opens. And you see um, another hallway that goes ah. down to the west. Uh, this one is has a fair amount of debris in it. Um, is there any and, smells in the air when the door opens? Uh, it's funny you ask. Um, when you open the door, uh, when the door is opened, rather, you do see uh, almost like a faint um red mist uh it doesn't you know it's it's just sort of floating in the air almost like a reddish dust it's just hanging in the air and the motion of the door 
Mm -hmm. uh, just stirred it up a little bit, and there's like little billows. And it smells. Um, are you up there at the door? Uh, I, there? Yeah, as soon as I uh, see the door sort of starting to open, I'll walk up with the group. Yep. Um. So, yeah, there's a, a slight acridness to it. Uh, roll a nature check. Yeah, there's there's something off about the air here. It it smells almost musty, but at the same time, a little bit uh, like an ammonia -y smell. Okay, uh, can I? Uh... Would I be able to... So I was trying to get a sense if there's like a scent on the air that would indicate either fresh air or stagnant water or whether or not we're going ah. up or down kind of thing. Um, well, you've definitely been going up. The, the floor okay. has been coming up after right, right. you left the Nirid's room. And then you went up another um, about eight or ten feet of stairs to get up to where you are now. Right, okay. Um, so you're definitely going upward. Um, All right. And it's not it's it's a it's slightly obscuring in the air, but it's not it doesn't seem too bad. I'm going to pull my cloak or jacket up over my mouth a little bit and be like, well, mm -hmm. that doesn't look good. Are we going to die? Give me a minute. I breathe <laughs> them in. If I fall over, you guys get the hell out of here. Sounds good. Go ahead. <laughs> You know, like, wait for a minute. Do I feel any tingling or anything like that after inhaling it? Um, no, nothing really. All right, I'm going to stick my head in and go. Uh, it's it's acrid. All right. Uh, it, it stings a tiny bit when you take a deep breath in and really try to do that. Um, I, I sneeze really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. don't do what I did, but it uh, seems all right. You could have the bless that Percival gave me for the sneeze. I haven't sneezed yet. I'm good. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Um, I can't see too well in here, so if someone wants to go around. I mean, if that's not going to kill me, I will go look. All right. Well, let's uh, go onwards. Yeah, does anyone mind like if if uh if Axelman tries to light a torch, does anyone stop him? Uh, well, uh doesn't uh Percival have the uh glowy orb that's following us around or whatever? Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, I have the orb. Everything? Yep. Oh, in that case it's fine. Yeah. I just realized that uh somehow furbolgs don't have dark vision. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> Seems weird for a forest dweller, but um, they've got other skills. Yep. Furbolg? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even knew that. Um, okay, so we have light. We're going in. I will look into the room. Okay. Be like, what do I see? Um, so the one thing you do notice is light doesn't go quite as far in the, this red mist. Um, but you can still see. Um, what you see is a hall about 20 feet wide. There's these piles of debris and trash, and I'll reveal a little more as you're, as you're looking at the door. Um, and what you see on the walls, though, are all of these uh, frescoes, these, these slightly carved and painted scenes. Um, the one directly across from you, the parts you can see, looks like a um uh a journey across you see some mountains and then the jungles and at the end of the wall on the corner uh, about uh here it looks like they're in a a small city um and if you as you look around the corner along the south wall um, you see frescoes of battles. Uh, you see what look like uh, a native uh, low-tech people uh, fighting against 
uh, an invading horde of uh, armored uh, creatures that seem to have uh, in the in the in the carving. They're very stylized carving, and they you see one looks like a serpent head, and another one that has uh, a jackal's head, and the inv in the armored invaders. Uh, and a lot of others wearing odd headdresses uh, battling this native population. Okay. So it uh, looks like it's another one of them, like, diorama rooms. <laughs> um, do we keep going? Yes, I feel that this is just a distraction. We should move forward. And I'm just going to march forward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, once you get in there too, you also notice that the light isn't going as far in this. It's got a, a very faint red haze to it, almost like a like a morning mist on, on a lake. So it's not really obscuring your vision, it's just not letting the light go much further. Hmm. Um, but yeah, as you go in, you just see the, the hallway continuing on and on. Um, so the frescoes are like fighting, fighting, fighting city. Uh, so no, no, Not on the city. south wall, the one on the right side of your screen, uh, is the battle. This, okay. the north wall here is more of, it looks like people going through a voyage. As you go further on it, you're going backward in time, it, okay. it appears. Um, and then you see, uh, a caravan of people crossing mountains uh there's another air, other area where they're on ships on some water uh it's definitely depicting a voyage of some sort okay was there anything on the east wall here um no no you don't really see anything there how big are these they're as far they're all the way down they're they're off as far as you can see at this point. like they could each Painting is this one big painting? It's or? a it's a long it's a long thing. Think of a tap. Okay. Uh, it's a long fresco, mm -hmm. like you would see on the top of a Greek temple or gotcha. something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, except that it's about three or four feet tall, carved slightly into the wall. Uh, you see a lot of torch sconces as well that are empty. Uh, this looks like it was a fairly well traveled. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll. Yeah, as I'm yes. walking, I've got my 10-foot pole out, and I'm going, tap, tap, tap. On the tap, wall tap. or on the floor? Where are you tapping? On the floor. Uh, wherever I'm walking, I'm going. Yep. Be like, what? Okay. You don't trust me? Oh, I trust you. I don't trust me. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I'll continue to look for it. Um, roll a general party. perception check, uh, Axel. Okay. So yeah, you're just tapping along as you're going. I'm going to look around as well. Okay. Yeah, it just it goes off into the distance. You don't really see much. Uh, again, these floors are very nicely carved stone. Okay. Um, and uh, Sir Percival and Zephyr are walking along with you. Um... Does the rubble appear to be falling from the ceiling or from the frescoes? Uh, mostly like the ceiling. Okay. Uh, you and when you look up, you can see there are some areas that um, the ceiling is seems like natural stone and bits have fallen. Okay. Uh, it's not as nicely carved. It's sort of a it was carved out into a sort of an arch, but it's not. It's just crumbling. A sure. lot of it is crumbling. Um, actually, if you want to make a nature check. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's it's a, there's a lot of crumbling stone and things like you just it just seems like it's a lot of it has fallen over the years. Yeah. Okay. Well, you down. That's the thing about these civilized folks. They're always trying to record their histories. I mean, nature gives us something to fall back on and eventually you just fall flat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't you know? Yes. And nobody's seeing it in here anymore that gives a crap. <laughs> this is a very long hallway. <laughs> yep. Yep. And um, 
down towards the end of it, as you're walking down, you see um, double bronze doors. Um, that you similar to the ones that you came through uh, the on the other side from the Nerids. This side of it has a bronze like leafing on it that wasn't on the other side. Uh, they are down at the end and they are open at the moment. And you look down um, and it looks like there's an archway above uh, that the doors open above, or excuse me, in and they're above the doors. And they're sort of twining serpents. And you just see shat like the corridor seems to go on forever in like a shadowy area. Okay. Um, I'll kind of turn to the group and be like, shh. I'm going to check that over there. And I will, like, kind of quiet and move up to the open door. Okay. Before he goes, I'm going to cast Pass Without Trace. Ooh. Oh, okay. That's sweet, sweet. All right, test. so plus, plus 10 on your stealth check. Okay, 30. 30. So you just vanish. <laughs> um... You just disappear in, into the shadows, and you're going down. Uh, make a perception check. Oh wow! Okay, My, it, it sat on it sat on three for a minute, and yeah. then finally tripped to seventeen because I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's not okay. Then, um, just in time before you just sort of walk into it. You see that it the the hallway actually ends, and that wall along the west is or is like very very ornately painted uh, to look like a continuing tunnel. Um, and there are two look like alcoves that go off to either side beyond the door. Uh, think of it as sort of the uh, coyote painting a tunnel against the wall and the road. Yeah, it's very similar to that type of look. Cool. Um, I will stop at the edge and look both ways. <laughs> like a good person crossing the road. <laughs> yep. Uh, what you see are just two small alcove areas that go in about 10 feet. Wow. This is lovely. Um, I'll tell the others they can come down. Um, looks like we got a dead end. Um, are you still checking everything as you're going, or just... Sort of I'm checking everything, everything, yeah. All right, then make another perception check. Oh, the clicks. Oh, man. Oh, phew. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as you're looking and looking down into the niches, uh, you see along the floor that the, the 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 really nice flagstones, uh, the ones at the end of each of these tunnels look a little bit raised. Huh. Can I go closer and investigate? Um, sure. Okay. Uh, go ahead and do a um perception check um okay sir percival <laughs> yes you you did move into the end there yes i did yeah um so roll a perception check <laughs> and uh you can roll an investigation check scab sure. all right so you're looking oh, at the God. pressure plate, and, he, and behind you, you hear the armored form of Sir Percival sort of poking around, trying to figure out. Uh, Sir Percival, as you step on that end, you feel the floor give a little bit. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, Axelman, you can see this, and uh, you can hear this, Korik, from where you are. Suddenly, from the walls, horizontally, Iron bars come shooting out across each way, and uh, there's about a six-inch gap between each one, floor to ceiling in the archway, closing off the archway. 
<laughs> so uh, in the doorway, so not in the the. Yeah, not you. You they're not like stabbing you like the the this spears. Is okay, yeah, yeah. The sunlight spears, but yeah, this Even is now to draw. this area is blocked off by uh, horizontal metal bars. Did they uh, just like fall super fast, or are they? No, they, 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 no they they came out and kind of shot across. Okay. Um, if you want to try and make a dex check, you can. For them to get in or for us to get out? I don't know. For whatever reaction he wants to make. Uh, my reaction would actually be to like try and kick one of the boulders in between the slamming Yeah, we'll make a uh, dex, door. A dex check first to see if you can react sure. in time. Uh, not a save, just a raw dex. A raw dex, yep. Um, so you see them start to go, and you go to try and kick the the rock over there, mm -hmm. but they move really quickly, and they're they're closed, and the rock it just slams down. into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, shit. I'm like, what? What? What did you do, Percival? <laughs> um, uh, uh, I I totally intended to do that to assist us with our endeavors. Yes. Now we're stuck. How far apart are the bars? About six inches each, okay. between each one. Nonsense. I just need to bend the bars with my mighty strength. <laughs> um, question mark? Yeah. Can I try to bend the bars? Um, sure. What do you want me to do? Uh, athletics? A strength check. No, a strength. just a strength check on this. Uh, if you want to do athletics, sure, why not? Uh, I did click strength. That's okay. Okay. Uh, they're really hard. They're really strong bars. Uh, I'm going to continue investigating the raised area on my part. Um. Yeah, if you want to take another look. Investigation or perception? Uh, it, uh, do an investigation. You can do this at advantage because you know that there's some sort of trigger there. That's not going to help. Um, you know there's some sort of a trigger there. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> um, and you can look and you see that there's, there are, it is a raised area around there. Um, and you can probably like sneak tools or something underneath it, but it's, it's tricky. I'll attempt it. All right. Um, give me a... Check with your thieves tools, I guess. Yep. <laughs> um, let Rolls, me check man. one thing. Doo -doo. Yeah, okay. So you you dig in under them. Um, you get in underneath and you feel the latching mechanism. And you're able to disable the one on this uh, plate. Yeah. Um, and you're pretty sure that this won't be able to be triggered. Uh, you might, you, you feel like you might want to get actually underneath it, though, to be able to see the mechanism to see if there's any way to, to disarm it. But you don't feel confident doing that with this one. Okay. Um, you've just you've disarmed it anyway. It's not yeah. going to go anywhere. You have it shimmed in place, and you could feel the the mechanism underneath. Okay, so in that case, I'll go to this one, which has already been triggered. Yep. And do the same thing. Yep, exactly the same thing. With more confidence. Mm-hmm. Clicked it. I haven't. Click. Oh, I clicked it twice. We're gonna see two come up. Oh, well, there you go. Take the bottom one. I'll take the first one. No, the it will be the that was the first one. Yeah. yeah. Um. So you get in there and you're actually getting in underneath, and you are pretty sure you can probably work the mechanism. Uh, you feel a couple of latches and things like that. It's going to be too strong to do with your tools, though. You're going to have to maybe lift the stone somehow. First of all. Um. Yeah. But, of, of course I'll assist you, small creature. It's scab, and you know it. Fine. Lift this up slightly so I can get my hands in here and get us out of this predicament. 
All right. What do I want to roll? I have to roll. Um. Roll a strength check with advantage because he told you where to grab and how to lift it. Um. Hmm. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check my note on something. <laughs> oh dear. We're all gonna die. Pretty much. So it's really difficult to lift. It's caught in there and you don't have a lot of clearance on either side. So you're sort of with your fingertips and trying to pull and you get enough up and it's taking you about five or five minutes or so. And you get it up enough to get a finger underneath to be able to lift a little further. And you get it up there and you hear some, you hear clicking noises as you're doing this. Um, but scab with that, that crit success you're not worried about it because you know it's already been triggered and nothing's going. No, nothing more is probably going to happen. <laughs> probably, probably. Um, and you are, you're able to lift it up about six or seven inches up off of the area. More um, than enough. Uh, but you can't get it out of there, so you're going to have to hold it up while um, scab works. Okay. While this is going on, what uh, Korik and Axelman? What are y'all doing? So just to be clear, it's the it's not the door that Percival is holding up. No, no, it's not the door. It's okay. it is the flagstone, the the floor. Got plate. it. Um, and I can't assist at all by putting my arm through the. No, you can't reach thing. it. It's okay. about five five or six. Understood. In. Um, I am gonna try and just yank open the door. Um, the bars. Yeah, and I'm not trying to bend the bars, but they came together, so I'm trying to separate them again. So what they they not they didn't come together and meet there. Oh. They, they alternated and went across. Oh, and up against up against the other it's door like frame. This? I understand. Oh, uh, hold on, let me like get that. the video back up here. I lost my video. Yeah, they they came across like that and hit the opposite door frame. Got oh, it. okay. So okay. Look at the yeah. video, Jordan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I might just no. I might just try one then. Um, I do have a, a pull strength of eight hundred and forty pounds. No, nope. well, pardon me. Um, all right, yeah, roll a roll a strength check on this. Um, like, screw you, little cars parked in my parking spot. <laughs> it's really in there. You get in there and you're pulling really hard against it. Yeah. And it sort of moves a tiny bit, but that's with all of your might. Well, kids, you guys might live there now, but uh, I'm working real on pretty it. art around here. <laughs> uh, can I take a look at the art on this wall? Yeah. Um, this is depicting the beginning of the journey. Um, it looks like that the Voyagers left a, uh, a flooded land. Okay. Um, or there was some, it looks like it was a disaster. There's water, you see yeah. buildings falling and people fleeing. Um, they, the next, the next scene shows them, um, living out of tents and wagons. Yeah. Uh, getting to a city. Uh, then the next thing is them leaving the city almost in chains. It looks like it's hard to tell, uh, exactly. Um, and then you get up to about where Zether is standing right now, mm -hmm. uh, up about here, and you see uh, a giant one of the one of these golden sunburst patterns again. Except this one is almost filling the filling the ceiling to about halfway down the wall, and the sun the beams of sun are breaking the shackles on these people. And the next scene is them walking towards uh ships and that's where it goes to them going across water and then down sorry the sunbeam thing uh was that a have i seen that before or yeah it's been fairly common okay uh this is the most ornate one you've seen got it but it's a it's it's a it's it's a fair been a fairly common pattern it's a almost an insignia of the so it looks like uh the natural disaster forced them out they found refuge, but were enslaved, and then something gave them the power to carry on or break free or something like that. Yeah. 
Is that yep. sort of the gist I'm getting? Yeah, okay. yeah. It almost looks like there was sort of some sort of either divine or some other intervention that is represented yeah. by this sunburst. And then later on down the hallway, if I remember correctly, you said that they appeared to be sort of displacing other natives of the area as well. Ah, uh, so that's along the southern wall on the other side. Yeah. And they're a series of various battles. First one was uh, the armored folks taking on what looked like natives. Uh, there was another one where they're battling uh, snake people. Hmm. Uh, some of them have snakes for arms. Some of them have human bodies, but almost like a cobra style head. Um, and giant snakes with them as well. Um, and then there's another one where they're battling uh, what look to be uh, cr creatures that are maybe undead. You can't really tell, but there's like some skeletons and sure. uh, mangled bodies coming at it, and that's what you're guessing at. Uh, there's just a series of battles and conquests uh, across the thing. They don't seem to actually line up necessarily with what's going on on the other wall, Got but it. just commemorating events and, and sure. glorious battles. Uh, you do notice uh, the sun uh, pattern between as a sort of a transition between each battle. Okay. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, um, Korik, were you doing anything else during this? I saw that... Uh... Zephyr, no, not Zephyr. Uh, Axelman couldn't uh, help them escape from there, so yep. I was like, "Well, he's a big guy. I don't know if I could do anything better. Guess I'll try, though." To All uh, right. you can give, try to give it a give it a strength check. I'll try to pull one of those uh, strength tech or athletics. Yeah. Um, either one, actually. Go ahead. No, yeah, it's really they're wow. they're very 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 hard. I'm working on um, it. <laughs> All the uh, time when we're trying to do that, it's either nine or ten. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, All right. right. Scab, go ahead and do a uh, thieves tool check here. Man. One. Good. Okay, so this takes you a few minutes. You're going in there, and it's hard to see. Because you only have a little bit of a, a view area, but you get in there and your small arms actually point, um, and you see a number of uh, sp almost like spring mechanisms that were the triggering, um, and then they lead up uh, to uh, cords uh, and why and and taut wires, um, and you're able to sort of snip some of those and you, when they, they you cut them, they sound like piano wires cutting with a twang. Uh, and it takes you about five, five or ten minutes of doing this, going through, cutting a few things. Um, when you hear um, another metallic popping noise and uh, the, the side that you're on, half of the, the bar's retract somewhat about halfway uh so there probably would be enough room for you to sneak under uh the bars sneak through the bars easily um sir percival you probably could but we'll have to do a check on all right uh so scab you can just scurry through because it makes about a foot a uh, little over a foot opening with the bar retracted so you um, can get through. Before I do, um, I want to like kind of look at the, the the continuing hall wall. Is there anything special mm -hmm. about it? Um, perception check. Is that? Um, yeah, it's a it's really well painted and carved, and it is a great optical illusion. But it, you don't see anything beyond that. It's just really okay. And you're like, you're like, this is actually kind of cool. Somebody put some thought into this to make me walk into a wall. Yeah. Um, being the kind and gentle and caring goblin that I am, 
I will offer Percival to leave first in case he gets stuck. <laughs> Why, thank you, kind scab. I will okay. attempt to leave. Um, okay. Um, what will we make this check to be? You want to give me a hand? I'll yank you right out of there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, you know what? Make this one a because you're you're like shimmying and trying to get through. Make it an acrobatic, oh, and with it, with with uh, Axelman helping you, you'll have advantage. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about as acrobatic as a uh, I sack could just of potatoes. Start kicking her and trying to shove her through. That's him. pretty great. Kicking him. Kicking um, him. Sorry. So yeah, about halfway through, you get stuck on your 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 sword belt, and your uh, your you've taken your pack off, but your the pouches and things on your belt definitely get caught, and you're having trouble getting past, and kind of stuck. Oh at no! That point. You're about halfway through. You are totally poo bear in this <laughs> in this gap. Oh god, you guys are gonna let me eat for a week. Oh. Well, you're stuck. Got any, like... And because the, because the bars are halfway uh, retracted, you are not getting out that way. You probably have to get out on another one that's above it or something. <laughs> you have to like climb up on oh, top me? of yeah. them and yeah, and get out one of the others. Like I could always check the other thing and see what happens, but you're not going to be able to lift that stone though. Mm. Uh, nope. Unless you got some. Butter or something and try to slide it. Butter, oil. Um, you could probably try and get through again. You know, try and pull through again if you want to. You know, if everybody's helping you and pushing and pulling. <laughs> yeah, I I'm guess. Like, you know what? Uh, as I'm it. trying to like push her through or <laughs> him through, you know what would have been made this probably easier is if you took off your freaking armor. Yes, that would have been a logical conclusion. Uh, meanwhile, Zether has wandered down, like, <laughs> just staring at everybody with disdain. Yeah, well, I'll yell over. I don't sense. pay you to lounge. I'm not lounging. I'm standing guard. <laughs> From what? The rubble? You don't know. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he just turns away. <laughs> um, do we yeah. get Percival yeah. through? Um. Yeah, Percival. Do a. Uh, we'll just do pure strength this time because you're just forcing yourself through. Oh, we're forcing him if I can. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you struggle and you pull and you can feel your armor like crumpling a little bit. Oh no, my poor armor! I won't be fabulous <laughs> um, anymore. But you do. You do pop through. You fall through. Um. And when you stand up. You look like you've sideswiped a truck on your chest <laughs> and on your back. It's just these scratches and gouges on your... And a part of it, you had this inlaid part of your breastplate. That actually broke off and is lying on. I'll pick it up. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's not going to buff out. Yeah, it'll buff out. I've seen worse. <laughs> I will uh, clamor on through. Pick up the, the, the inlaid up her is you <laughs> okay so yeah you're out of that area um freedom yeah so, freedom yeah. to the other side so uh now what i guess we have to go all the way back yeah, i guess so there's nothing else down here um, can I tap on the walls with my 10 foot pole? Um, sure. Which one? I, I want to listen for a hollow spot. I... I'll tap on the ones to the, uh, this one, uh, this one. And actually I will, I'll stick it through the bars as well and try and hit the, All right. the one on the other side. We'll do that one first. Do a perception check on that. It's pretty solid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one with the big sun was on the north side, right? 
Yeah, r almost almost exactly the middle, right up here along this okay, wall. Okay, I'm gonna go check that one out. I've been seeing the sun everywhere we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm going to go and take a look at this sun. All right, give a uh, perception check. As here comes the sun. Do 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 do. That's a really nice carving of a sun, and it's actually super ornate. Uh, and it has these little beams that come down and sort of uh, looks like they're rescuing the people, as I, as I said before, and, and guiding them through uh, to the other side and everything. But you don't really see much else with it. It's, it's a just it's a very, very nice car. Is it just carved like out of the stone or is it like it's carved kind into of... the stone a little bit, actually? OK, um, it's a I... it's a fresco. It's you know, it's carved into the stone. OK, do I see even though it's. You're mentioning it's carved into the stone. Is there any kind of like edging around it? Uh, it's hard to tell. All right. Uh, I don't know if I really care about this anymore. So I, I'm thinking maybe using my hammer and just smashing the fresco. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are you gonna start smashing? Oh no, you uh, don't got no marble set. I did nothing. I'm thinking just start at the end here, then work my way down. Oh gosh. <laughs> Alright, roll roll an attack. Are you while he's doing this, are you still walking along the walls tapping? Axelman? Uh yeah, Axelman's basically always oh. tapping. <laughs> okay. Tap tap tap. Yeah. Um, so you hit the wall. Go ahead and roll some damage. <laughs> With my pole? Oh, oh rubber. Yours. No, 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 rubble. Yeah. You, you, you break open uh, one of the fleeing people, and you just cut that whole thing in half, uh, and it's just stone behind it. All right. Next. Um, <laughs> Axelman, do a perception for your next tap. <laughs> It's it's pretty solid. It feels really, really solid as you're tapping along this area mm -hmm. uh, from the doorway up to about where you are now. Um, and that can cover both sides. So you're just sort of tapping on either side as you're going. Yeah. It's pretty solid. Okay. I, uh, I think we got to get uh, back to the old swamp pit over there where you found me and maybe move on. I'm going to take an extremely long amount of time, as much as time is not allowed while Mr. Smashy Smashy is coming up the, the, the hallway, and continue looking at this stupid sun. It's got to be something with the sun. Um, go ahead and do another, uh, yeah, do another perception check. Why not? Okay. So you've been looking at this for a little while. Going insane. Um, yeah, yeah, you are. Um... And you're you're looking at the sun, and you're looking at the people, and you're showing it's they're like the sun is like guiding them through, and you're looking around, and then as you're you're going through, you look at the beams, and the beams are offset from the sun a little bit, and it looks like the sun is actually in a little further uh, than the rest of the carvings. And how far up? By by like a quarter inch. Like, like from where I am, being like four foot something. How high um, up is it? Well, it goes out. It's pretty high, but it comes from almost the ceiling uh, down to it's about three three feet off the ground, which is why you had trouble seeing this. Gotcha. Um, I'll see uh, the hairy man kind of tapping everything. I'll be like, hey, you want to come tap this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm giving you all the lines tonight, man. All it's the lines. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, so you go over and you where are you, sun or on the uh, where he points to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that the sun then? Yeah. Yeah. All Here right. Comes the sun. Give me a nice perception check then. Poking the sun. Uh, yeah. From me or from? For you. For you. Okay. Yes. Where the sun tapping. is shining. You're tapping and looking. I will assist you in looking. So it sounds pretty solid, but it as you're tapping, you notice it moves a little bit from when you're tapping. Push it. I push it. All right. Um, 
just do a, you know, give me a, what the hell? Give me a strength check. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> you yeah, penetrate your DC, the sun. Your DC was 10 on this. So yeah, <laughs> uh, you shove and the, the sun absolutely flies inward, clicks, and the wall swings open. Um, and I think I may have messed part of this up on the assembly, but we'll see if it works. It's not going to work, is it? Uh, it is. Hooray. What? Um, there is. And get back to the, this and here. And I'm just going to drop this down to the token area. Uh, there is a secret door here that goes through to a top. Yay. Well, dang, I'm a gosh darn wizard. You are, good sir. You are. <laughs> uh, I don't see the secret door. Did an S drop into there? Okay. I, I didn't see one. I'm just going to draw it then because uh, it's it was supposed to, but I also changed a bunch of stuff oh, okay. around. And I probably just... Oh, it, it might be because the darkness is covering yeah, it? The darkness. Okay, possibly. Draw that um, globe. I'll just reveal that far. There you go. Got it. And I think this is where we're going to call it for now. Yeah, very good time. This is a good break point here. You do look in and you look down uh, the corridor there. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what you see. Uh, uh, you see a long hallway that goes off into the darkness. You can't see it beyond there. Very high ceiling. And what you see is, at least right inside the door, is a sculpture mounted on the wall. Uh, it's a very uh, ornate sculpted head of an animal. It's about six feet above the floor, two to three across. Uh, and the first one you see is uh, the head of a coyote. And looking into the distance, you can just barely make this out. I'll just throw, uh, is it? here we go, to here. Uh, the next one you see is a bear. Uh, so there's these, these animal statues going down the hallway. In, and the reddish mist is here as well. And that's where we're going to call it. Cool. Right on. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, you missed the DC on finding the sun like by one or two each time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks everybody. Um, we will be back next Friday. Um, I'm assuming we'll probably just continue with this for now to finish it up. Sure. Okay. That's yeah. Fine with everybody. I don't know how many more we have, but um, we'll talk about it later. But we can talk. We can finish. We can work yeah. on this more next. Week. Well, I'll update things and stuff. Send stuff out. Um, yep. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, less waiting at doors for an hour and a half, and more actually doing doing stuff, doing things, stuff. which yes. is good. Uh, yeah. So we will see you next time. Thanks all. Thank you. Good night.